It's about damn time. Despite how Steam screwed up the port for Dynasty Warriors 7 Extreme Legends. But I liked Dynasty Warriors 7 and it was a fun game for me. Then Empires came out. Problem is, never got my hands on it. Due to the fact that I didn't have a PS3 and even then, it had availability issues. As in, it's only available online in North America. And now altogether for the PS4 Plus Premium. Yeah, already we see a black mark on this game, but does the rest of the game actually make up for the fact that you have to go through great lengths just to play it? Well, that's what this review is for. To break down the cons and the pros of Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires. So, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, let's not waste any time. Let's crack this game that's been elusive to me open right now. See, this is the reason why I harp on exclusivity in all of my reviews. This right here, not only was it only digitally available for the PS3 in North America, whereas everybody else internationally had a hard copy, and there's a reason why I could issues on the PS3, but now, it is only $17.99 a month on the PS4. It's not a good deal, it's terrible. It should have been released on the console, and that's all I gotta say about that. This is why I harp on exclusivity all the time. For a game that is very elusive, it has such a bare bones menu. All the options you have is there, even if you import data from Dynasty Warriors 7 Extreme Legends. So basically speaking, not only is it bare bones, but Koei had the utter audacity to do the one thing that it loves to do, that it shouldn't do, but it does. Add DLC to a game, which by the way, you're not going to be able to have access to because it's no longer on PSN. And speaking of PSN, it's streamed via PSN, so therefore, you're going to have to rely on the network of your service. God forbid if it gets cut off, there's no game for you. And by the way, God forbid if the frame rate drops too. And speaking of dropping, or should I say difficulty drop, the fame pretty much alienates the entirety of the game. There is no difficulty here. It's just the higher your fame, the more powerful you get. The lower your fame, the more you're going to get your ass kicked. And you won't be able to do anything without fame. And with that said, I am going to go to the pros. Also, before I go, let me point out the most baffling design flaw when it comes down to streaming the past games. Having the start and select button being attached to the left and right side of the touchpad is an absolute inconvenience because when I call my horse, I inadvertently get brought back to the main screen. Just thought I'd point that out to you. Now we go on to the pros. Oh, there are pros to this game, and a good number of them. The fact that you now have 200 characters to work with, and a lot of space to put them in as opposed to Dynasty Warrior 6 Empires, and more importantly, you can simply buy all of the armor from past games with bonus points by just simply playing the game and accruing bonus points. Armor, by the way, that used to be DLC in Dynasty Warrior 6. But more importantly, they actually have more 
to work with than six. Maybe not as deep as eight, but they have more to work with with six. Definitely more to work with with nine, but the most important thing they have is you will never see a Dynasty Warriors nine, Jiggle Physics. That's right, this game is the last game, or well, second to last game to have them. Eight somewhat had them, but not by much. And also they have a catalog button where you can just simply pick whatever outfit you have instead of using the slider and it makes things a lot more convenient. You can mix and match outfits, you can mix and match armors, it doesn't matter. You can make your character as unique as humanly possible. Something Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires have completely forgotten about. But the best part about this is you can actually use different weapons and you can use different EX modes if those weapons just happen to be a clone weapons, but more importantly you can use a different Musou 1 and a Musou 2 for your weapon. So you don't necessarily have to have the base weapon to use the Musou. Why didn't that actually work out in Dynasty Warriors 8 and 9 Empires? I don't know. I don't know why they took that away, but that's the best thing they ever had. And more importantly, being able to choose your ability type is great, and your fame will actually affect what kind of stratagems you get. Yeah, fame sucks. Fame royally sucks. But the kind of fame you have will basically make it to where you will end up either having a lot of money or being very crafty in battle, or more importantly, getting a lot of money by being an asshole or just having your troops healed and ready for battle. But whatever the case, stratagems are key, especially in battle, because it makes you think, and more importantly, you could screw over your enemies, especially with rock slides, pitfalls, ambushes, supply depots, you name it, you could screw them over so long as you get the stratagem. And of course, you're gonna get stratagems from playing Empire's mode, whether you're a ruler, a subordinate to a ruler, an officer, or even a Vagabond. It doesn't matter so long as you manage to build up your fame you'll get stratagems and those stratagems will more than likely help you out. More importantly in empires if you start out as a ruler in Gathering of the Heroes you can make as much territory as you want to start off with and not have to worry about RNG. Dynasty Warriors 9 what the Fuck did you drop that? Anyway, um, also, you can actually uh, use policies, no matter what you are, to try to help you out in the coming years. Because you got 50 years in order for you to take over all of China. And believe me, you're going to take all of, over all of China no matter what. Even if it means that you have to stop and do some defenses, you will take over China in a very short period of time. More easily as a vagabond than what you will as an actual officer. So bear that in mind. And also the oaths and marriages are back, but they have more important things this time. And by important, I mean they not only will come to your aid and will always be on your force. They also carry over to the next empires, I think. But, wait, no, no, I'm thinking of eight, never mind. <clears throat> but also, those sworn brothers will have a special cutscene if they die, so too does your spouse if they die as well. More importantly, your spouse, if you're a ruler, would more than likely make them second in command. And of course, you if you actually are an officer or a vagabond that, be, that raised their flag or became an officer, you could try probably be a ruler and more importantly, make yourself either emperor or make yourself, if you're an officer, like a general or strategist or anything like that. But more importantly, while I'm talking about that, we're also in town and you don't have to worry about legendary weapons until you reach a high fame. 
That's why I said fame ruins everything, but at the exact same time, having fame does have its benefits. That means all you have to do is come in with the coin and buy all of the weapons. So that way, you will be able to have your favorite weapon, and yes, there is no weapon allocation in this game. You can have nothing but legendary weapons and just run through everyone in this blasted game. You could have all the items available and run through everybody in this blasted game. You could have all the animals available. You could just simply pick one and run through everybody in this blasted game. God forbid I already bought red hair as you already saw in earlier cutscenes. I mean, frame rate drops aside. But also, you can change the look of your outfit. You may not be able to change your outfit in um, Empire's mode, but you'll be able to change the look of your outfit. You'll be able to change the color of your outfit to match the uh, uh, outfits of everybody else, and more importantly, match the force that you're on, which, for example, I am the Yellow Turban, which is why my suit is made of pure gold. But, yeah, I I'm repping the brand here. But whatever the case, you can come into the Clothier and buy all of your armor if you don't already do that in Extra Mode. Whatever the case you could do, you can always come to town anytime. And by the way, coming to town will not cost you a day or cost you a turn. Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires can suck my dick for that. Okay. I can stop talking about that and actually talk about the battle system because that actually is better. And now we can talk about the combat. The combat, let's be honest, is better than 7 because there is no skill grid. All you're doing is just beating the enemies with your skills alone because all your EXs are available and all of your skills are available by Jump Street. You don't have to put skill points on anything. Well, you do have to train up your levels so that you'll have more troops to work with and raise up your fame, much to my chagrin. But you won't have to worry about skill points ever again. Nor dim sum, musa wine, uh, swords and shields. Something Koei thankfully have gotten rid of once and for all because it's not in the later games. And with that said, we can now go straight to the rating. And with the pros and cons compiled, it is now time for the Give This Game a rating. Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires gets a rating of good. And there's a reason why. For everything that it has done right, it also done things wrong. I didn't mention the English dialogue because it was a no-brainer by now with Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires and 9 Empires. But, the point of the matter is, the exclusivity and fame. The two key things that made sure that this game did not get any higher than a good. The fact that it's hard to get to, and the fact that fame doesn't increase difficulty, but just slows things down to a snail pace, it's just absolutely terrible. Other than that, the game's fine on its own right. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next review. Take care and peace out.